everyone. Thank you for having me here today. I'm excited to talk about the journey that Novartis is on and how we're bringing AI uh, to influence and impact the patients that we care for. I have a long outline, and I was actually sitting there listening to first Ron and then Emma speak, and I decided to, to do a little bit of impromptu changing a little of what I wanted to talk about. So hopefully that'll go okay. There's a lot I wanted to cover. Um, I am from Alabama, but I can talk fast, so hopefully uh, we'll get through most of it. Novartis is a, is a fascinating company. Uh, our goal with our new CEO is to reimagine medicine, and that is something that everyone at Novartis uh, holds really dear to them. How are we changing medicine for patients? And the word reimagine was chosen with a lot of intention. It means that we want to think differently, we want to bring innovation, and we want to try things and not be afraid of failure. So reimagining is really this concept of, of, of changing it up. We're a very diverse company. We're located in a lot of different areas, and we have many different platforms from small molecules to CAR T therapy to gene therapy. We also have radio ligon therapy. So we're covering a lot of different platforms for how we can care for patients, and of course, in a lot of different disease areas. But what does it mean when our CEO adds go big on data and digital as one of his five strategic imperatives? Well, that was a pretty big question for people. What does that mean? We, we started a hashtag on our internal Yammer that said, go digital, big data, yay data. We had lots of these things, but no one really knew what it meant. And uh, this is where we have people in all, over, all over the world, and they're charged with going big on data and digital. And I think the great thing that Novartis did is it started to rethink about the talent. So first, a little bit about me, and maybe my personal journey can help you understand how Novartis is trying to bring in a different mindset to reimagine medicine. I'm a physician first, an epidemiologist second, and a data scientist third. My career has been about closing the gap between the efficacy we see in clinical trials and the effectiveness we have in the real world. I have done that through both the scientific analysis of data and understanding what's going on, uh, through quality improvement and implementation research to understand how we could change people and processes. I've also done that through implementing EHRs, and hopefully there's no one's going to throw anything at me when I say that. Uh, but in adding EHRs and the digital interventions that we might be able to use to help support physicians and other caregivers to, to understand what to do at that moment and to support them. Because it's really difficult to do the right thing all the time without having some support. And so why in the world would Novartis take this person who's been doing this, who before joining Novartis was really focused on population health, precision medicine, and trying to bring together value in healthcare. I wasn't the necessarily the stereotypical person that they would go out and recruit. And I, I've been there for 20 months now. And when they called me and said, we'd like for you to come in and interview for the strategic data and digital position, I was like, well, I don't know what that means. And they've said, that's OK, we don't either. <laughs> and the, the, what they wanted me to do was come in and help them think about data, digital, analytics in a different way. They wanted me to challenge the status quo. They wanted me to come up with new ideas across the spectrum to use data and digital and analytics and to really just be open to failing. I was coming from a very different environment. I wasn't tied into the way that things had been, so I could be a key part of the reimagination. I was also told that my role was a, an experiment, which I like experiments, uh, but at the same time, it's a little bit daunting to make this jump in a career and be told, we're not sure if this is going to work out or not, but we'd like for you to come and give it a try. Uh, so far, it's been great. We've built up a, a great team. And we've gone through this journey of talking about uh, the entire span of what we do. So from discovery at the bench, through drug development, um, as we're doing in developing trials, and commercialization. So on the commercialization side, we have real-world evidence. Um, we have the ability to understand and prevent adverse events. Uh, we're entering into the area thinking about digital therapeutics. And there's just a tremendous amount of data that we can have uh, and use to influence the way that we go through these processes and with the end goal of improving care for patients. So as I mentioned earlier, Novartis is very diverse in what we're working on. This is just an example of some of the things that we have coming out in the next couple of years. The, the breadth of what Novartis is working on is what makes it such an interesting challenge from a data and analytics perspective. We have high degree of precision therapeutics um, through, you know, including gene therapy, so you can't get more precise than that, all the way through what we're doing in more uh, the general spaces, like in respiratory. And it's a fascinating uh, 
diversity of data, analytics challenges, and problems that we have to address in all the stages of a drug development and a drug being in, in the market. So I mentioned that our CEO, that's him, Foss, um, he talks about Novartis now not only just being an advanced therapy platform, so we're not just becoming a leading medicines company through our advanced therapy platforms, but also through data science. If you go back and, and look at any talk that he gives, he talks about digital data and data science in every single interview that he does. And his tagline is that we're looking for advanced therapy platforms and data science. So you can imagine how exciting it is to be in a place that your CEO is talking about this. But then what happens and what we have the additional work to do is, well, what does that mean? How are we using data science? What are the right ways to use these tools, and how do we bring together a really diverse group of people that are working at Novartis um, to achieve this end? As I mentioned, we have a lot of different platforms. So if you take, say, CAR-T, um, which I think is fascinating. So if you're not familiar with CAR-T, it's where we take patient cells, uh, we alter the patient cells, and then we give them back to them. So in some ways, it's similar uh, to an autologous transplant. Uh, it's used right now to treat um, lymphoma and uh, in ALL and kids, and uh, it's, it's really a revolutionary therapy. There's so much information and ways that we can use data science for this. Um, it was used in the discovery all the way through how we manufacture and how we improve. So again, because this is a uniquely made medication, right? Every time you get those patient cells, you want to understand how you can best get it through the process and be able to, to treat that patient. And then you want to do everything you can to prevent any adverse events and to ensure that the um, because this is so difficult to manufacture and each dose is extraordinarily unique for that one individual, you want it to be highly successful every time you administer it. So what can we, how can we use data to help us think about that? Those are the types of questions that we have. Um, we want to understand who should be treated as an inpatient, who could be treated as an outpatient, who could be um, at risk, and what might we do to try to prevent that going forward. Uh, and then another example with our radio pharmaceuticals is a, a great example of where there's a, a new therapy platform that is being explored and that we're bringing to, uh, to new types of cancers. The radio th pharmaceuticals have to be manufactured and administered. And so I talk, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the discovery and the drug development, but there's also huge logistical challenges as well. So the data science shouldn't just be limited to the discovery and the development, but the development of the manufacturing process like we might have in CAR-T, or the logistical challenges that you might have with something like radio pharmaceuticals. I'm always always fascinated when I talk to our teams over in our technical operations, how they're using data and thinking through some of these challenges. So I share that with you just because I want you to see that when we talk about advanced therapy solutions, data science is used across the entire continuum of what it means to identify and find a potential therapeutic all the way through how it ends up being delivered and then how we can continue to improve and understand how it's impacting patients after it's out in the market. So when we started this journey, we spent a lot of time sharing slides like this um, to people around Novartis. These are probably things that all of you know and probably quote. Uh, but believe it or not, this was new in the pharmaceutical industry. That was one of my big, biggest learnings, is people understood that there was some data, um, but the conversation wasn't really brought together to understand how it was going to potentially disrupt them, and then how we could work together to, to make that disruption be something that was a positive influence and help us reimagine medicine. And we spent a lot of time talking about why healthcare was such a powerful place to start about, um, to think about disruption and why digital disruption would come to healthcare. There's a lot of data. It's difficult to use some of that data, and some of the data might not be high quality. And I have to say, for a while, I would get a chills every time somebody would talk about, and not in a good way, every time someone would talk about big data in healthcare. I, as I mentioned, have spent a lot of time uh, with EHRs. I understand how that data gets in there. Uh, it's not always as highly precise as one might like. Um, humans enter that data, and if you're not aware, humans make mistakes. And so it can be up to 15% of blood pressures that are entered are entered incorrectly. And so when you start getting into highly precise populations like we do in oncology, where 
we're looking at such precision with their mutations, the potential targeted therapies that we could do, you don't have big data populations. You have small data. And the degree of precision that you need becomes, uh, becomes quite significant. There are analytics methods that you can use to help you overcome that, but you have to be aware of the problems that exist. And this is where I've seen um, a great investment at Novartis in bringing together different types of people with um, different levels of expertise in, in various areas in order to help bring this together. So I'm going to skip this. The goal is to try to move the pharma, the pharma pipeline faster. But what we've done, sorry, I should have memorized my slides. So in bringing this together in the data science team, we have the domain expertise. Uh, that might be people who really deeply understand the clinical area and the biology, the statistics and the computer science. And what's added in here are the epidemiologists. So when you're working uh, to develop a new model, some things that might be important that a data scientist or a statistician may not know are how do you define the exposure to a drug? In oncology, we have immuno-oncology, which you might heard, where we're altering the immune system. We don't know if one dose can alter something and how long those impacts could take. So how do I define that exposure? Um, there are things that data science can help me do, but the models will not be as sophisticated as I would like if I don't have all the experts around the table. And that's one of the things that we've worked on quite a lot at Novartis, is making sure that we have all the right people um, at the table that can have these conversations together with the goal of supporting each other so that we can move the conversation forward. We have used data and digital. Uh, I was laughing with Ron. He, he kind of shared one of the examples. One of the ways that we're using it is thinking about how can it not only transform the path, but how can we use it for discrete elements? So one of the ones that we're using is image analysis, image analysis for pathology. And that is an example of where you look across the breadth of ways that you can use data science, and then you can look for specific areas that are um, uniquely positioned to benefit from either AI or from machine learning. And so we try to do both of these. So we have a breadth and the depth approach um, of, of using data science to help us with drug discovery. And we're reimagining medicine with data and digital across our innovation, across our operations, and how we engage with our customers. So there's no area of the company that's not thinking about how data and digital can change the future and how we reimagine medicine for patients. Thank you. <laughs>